all right uh, assalamu alaikum uh, this is salah bin Nareen and uh, uh, we are recording the fourth video lecture uh, video, video tutorial for the topic of the carburetor and as i mentioned in the last uh, video tutorial that uh, uh, we would be we have completed the theoretical portion of the topic carburetor and now we are we will we will do the derivation for the calculation for the relation of the air fuel ratio uh, so we will start uh, from here today uh, first of all uh, if if we uh, in order to calculate the air fuel ratio we have to uh, determine we have to determine the uh, relation for the mass flow rate of air and not only for the air only but also for the mass flow rate of the fuel as well uh, the mass flow rate of the fuel which is which is moving uh, from inside the um, from inside the float chamber into the venturi throat through the fuel metering orifice uh, so we would be basically finding out two relations one for the mass flow rate of the air and second for the mass flow rate of the fuel then we will obtain we will simply divide them we will take the we will take the uh, ratio between them and as a result you will get the re uh, relation for the mass flow for the air fuel ratio of uh, for the air fuel ratio which is being prepared inside the carburetor okay uh, starting now uh, with the with the formulation for the uh, for for the mass flow rate of air uh, for example uh, a simple carburetor with the tip of the fuel nozzle h meters above the fuel level in the float chamber it may be noted that the density of the air is not same at the inlet of the carburetor and the venturi throat so uh, another point uh, uh, we we we, we uh, in this uh, paragraph basically there are two things which needs to be understand here the first one is basically that we are considering we are not neglecting the density change of the air from the carburetor from the inlet of the carburetor to the to that section of the nozzle uh, uh, at which the fuel is being taken in uh, or you can simply say into the venturi throat uh, we will consider the difference bit, uh, difference in the densities of these two sections so we would be doing the two derivations first one is when we are not neglecting the compressibility effects second one when we are neglecting the compressibility effects or you can say when we are considering air as an incompressible fluid so we would be doing these this derivation two times and for the second case when we are considering uh, air as an incompressible fluid this relation will be quite easier as compared to the relation which we are doing now another thing which needs to be understand here is that the tip of the nozzle is h meters or you can simply say uh, I, I will use z meters here here you can see that uh, the difference between these two levels is z Z is basically the difference between the fuel level at the float chamber fuel level inside the float chamber and that section where the fuel metering orifice is so the difference between this level is Z okay uh, consider this as Z so we will uh, first of all we will determine the 
mass flow rate of the air when we are taking the change in velocity into the account what we will do is we will simply apply the steady flow energy equation at the inlet and outlet section this is the inlet section of the carburetor and this section is the second section which is the inlet of the venturi throat so air is coming in from this direction and then entering then going to the venturi throat and we are applying the energy equation at this between these sections so we will take the energy heat heat coming in and heat going out between this process then the second portion in the energy balance equation is of any work done by the system or on the system and then the third section is of uh, the uh, is of any energy changes uh, which is as a result which is in a result of the mass which is coming inside and going outside of this carburetor of, of the uh, of this uh, circular section of the carburetor then we have the next expression is for the enthalpy changes and another one is for the uh, these changes uh, uh, for the kinetic energy changes uh, you must keep this in your mind is mind here is that h here is for enthalpy that's why for the elevation i am not using the letter h we will be using the uh, alphabet z which i mentioned in the diagram so h is for the enthalpy changes okay now since uh, the flow which is uh, going in the air flow which is going in side the carburetor and going outside the carburetor uh, there is no heat which is coming into the system and going out of the system similarly there is no work done into this uh, there is no work done by the system or on the system and there are no energy transfer with the flow of the air as well so all of these these terms on the left hand side on the left hand side of the uh, energy balance equation will be zero in this case because we are assuming we are assuming this as an adiabatic process so there will be no heat transfer and no work done and no energy changes uh, as a result of the air flow so we we will only be having the enthalpy change and the uh, we would only be having the enthalpy changes and the kinetic energy changes uh, in this energy balance equation similarly one more thing which needs to be understand here is that c2 is the velocity of the air at the venturi throat and c1 is the velocity of the air at the inlet or you can say at the section aa at this section at this section the velocity is c1 and enthalpy is h1 at section 2 the velocity is c2 and enthalpy is h2 at this section at section aa or state 1 the speed uh, the speed of the air is 
very very small as compared to the speed of the air at section 2 because at section 2 uh, kinetic energy has been increased as a result of the decrease in the pressure because we have a venturi at section 2 we have a venturi throat at section 2 so the air has passed through the venturi and the pressure energy has been converted into the into the uh, kinetic energy so the speed would be very high at section 2 as compared to the section 1 so we would be neglecting the so we would be neglecting c1 because the nozzle's inlet velocity is very small as compared to the velocity at the venturi throat now now we would only be left with c2 h2 minus h1 and when we rearrange this and this q minus w the uh, all the terms on the left side would be zero because we have an adiabatic process so when we shift this h2 minus h1 on the left side it will become h1 minus h2 this 1 upon 2 would go would then go on the left side to multiply with this h1 minus h2 and then we will simply take the square root to obtain this relation I hope this is clear now we have simplified this energy steady flow energy equation into this C2 is equals to under root 2 h1 minus h2 <coughs> because we have assumed a diabetic process so all the terms on the left hand side would be 0 since the velocity at venturi throat which is c2 is quite higher as compared to the velocity at the inlet of the carburetor so c1 is considered as 0 and when we rearranged this equation when we rearrange this equation we would obtain this relation which is c2 is equals to under root 2 2 times h1 minus h2 another thing which needs to be understand here is that we were talking about the heat work and energy which is coming in and out with the mass with the flow of the here and on the right hand side we had mass of the mass which is being multiplied with the difference in the enthalpy but in the next step the mass is not present because we we have simply sent this mass on the this mass on the uh, left hand side and instead of having the uh, heat energy or work energy we basically had uh, energy per unit mass and since we have an adiabatic process we have simply uh, we have simply uh, we do not have any sort of uh, energy changes and we do not have any work as well so uh, this this ter these terms will be uh, equal to zero okay so another thing which needs to be understand here is uh, air is behaving like an ideal gas and for an ideal gas we have these relations Cp times T and similarly if we have if we are talking about a constant 
volume process then we have relation this means H and U enthalpy and internal energy can be represented as in the terms of temperature if the working fluid which is air in our case is is uh, if the working fluid is uh, comparable or you can simply say uh, the working fluid is considered as an ideal gas which we are considering in our case right now so we will simply replace this H with Cp multiply by T so when we replaced H1 with Cp multiply by T1 and H2 with Cp multiply by T2 we will take Cp as common and as a result we will get the this relation which was under root 2 times h1 minus h2 it will be simplified into under root 2 times cp 2 times of cp multiplied by t1 minus t2 so right now we have obtained a relation for the speed for the speed of the air at the venturi throat now since the flow process from inlet to the venturi thro throat can be considered to be an isentropic process uh, as as you have uh, studied in the last semester in the subject of the thermodynamics that nozzles and diffusers are basically isentropic uh, uh, isentropic devices and uh, there are no uh, there uh, and there will be no change in the entropy there will be no change in the entropy in the no in the flow inside the nozzles and diffusers so we are basically considering this the this uh, that effect uh, in the venturi throat of this carburetor and we are applying the isentropic relation at state 1 and 2 and in the next step we will simply multiply this t2 upon t1 from 1 and when we are doing this we will also do the same thing on the right hand side and we will subtract this p2 upon p1 to the power gamma minus 1 upon gamma from 1 then in the next step uh, in the uh, left hand side we will take the LCM and this term will become t1 minus t2 divided by t1 and that t1 would be sent on the right side right hand side so that it will be multiplied with the uh, other factor which was already present on the uh, on the other side on the right hand side uh, now we have determined a relation for t1 minus t2 which was present in uh, which which we required for the uh, speed at the venturi throat we will replace it and as a result we get this relation for the we get this relation in terms of the pressure for the for the velocity at the venturi throat so now since uh, the mass flow rate of the air would remain same from section 1 to section 2 because we have a steady flow device a nozzle which is a steady a nozzle our nozzles are a steady flow device now we would we are also as I mentioned earlier that we will consider the air as an compressible fluid in the first case we have determined the relation for C2 we now we require a relation for the density at state 2 E2 is the design parameter which manufacturers already know but C2 and Rho2 uh, but the relations for C2 and Rho2 are required in our case we have determined the relation for C2 now 
we have to determine the relation for row 2 and then we will multiply these three factors to obtain the mass flow rate of the air. Now multiplying, so uh, in order to determine the density at state 2, we have an isentropic process, we are considering this relation. This is an isentropic relation for the pressure and volumes. We will simply convert this specific volume and uh, you have you also you can clearly see here that I have mentioned the volume in terms of a specific volume. I have divided the volume with the mass on both sides. So we are talking about the specific volumes here. So now uh, this specific volume is converted into the density in the next step on both sides as you may know that densities is equals to mass upon volume and when we are talking about specific volume specific volumes are volume divided by mass so when we compare these two relations the specific volume can be taken as the reciprocal of density 1 upon density so we have replace this specific volume with the density on both sides. Now rearranging this equation and making row 2 as a subject to obtain the relation for the density at state 2. Now we have we have a relation for the density at state 2. Similarly for the velocity at state 2 as well. We will simply replace the density and velocity in this equation to obtain the relation for the mass flow rate of air and this will be the case here. Here you can see that I have replaced rho 2 and also C2. So now uh, another thing which uh, when we go to next step here you can see that this rho 1 is changed into P1 upon R times of T1. This rho 1 is converted into P1 upon R times of T1. So here you can also see that as we know PV is equals to MRT and when we divide this volume with the mass it will become P times specific volume times RT. And when we convert this specific volume into density, we will get a relation like this. And when we rearrange this, so we will get P upon RP. Since we are talking about a state 1, so pressure and temperatures of state 1 would be used. The gas constant uh, R will be remain constant here. So we have replaced this density with P1 upon R times of T1. Now another thing in the next step which uh, we, need, we need to understand here is we are taking this P2 upon P1 to the power 1 upon gamma.
inside the inside the square root we are taking this p2 upon p1 to the power 1 upon gamma inside the square root where the power of this p2 upon p1 would become 2 times 2 upon gamma because it is inside the square root and then we will multiply this p2 upon p1 to the power 2 upon gamma with 1 and with minus p2 upon p1 gamma minus 1 to the power gamma and as a result when this factor is gone inside the square root and multiplied with this factor we will obtain this relation p2 upon p1 2 upon gamma p2 upon p1 gamma plus 1 upon gamma so another question will be how this gamma minus 1 upon gamma is converted into gamma plus 1 upon gamma uh, answer is very simple that when this this these factors are multiplied p2 upon p1 to the power 1 upon gamma p2 upon p1 to the power gamma minus 1 upon gamma since the bases are same their powers will be added to each other and when we add these powers so 1 upon gamma plus sorry uh, this is this will be 2 upon gamma since it is gone inside the uh, square root since the bases are same LCM would be gamma we, we have simply taken the LCM here then this will become gamma plus 1 upon gamma this was the simple calculation that how this gamma minus 1 upon gamma has become gamma plus 1 upon gamma. I hope it is uh, clear to you that how this p2 upon p1 to the power 1 upon gamma has gone inside and inside the square root and when it is gone inside the square root its power will become 2 upon gamma then it will be multiplied with 1 and the other factor which was present inside the square root inside this uh, brackets and then you will get this relation so another thing which uh, another uh, which uh, needs to understand here is of this temperature the temperature which was present inside the square root has now came outside the square root and I have simply represented as the under root of p1 because they are being multiplied with each other and I have simply mentioned it separately and when we in this temperature as we know that when root t and root t is multiplied with each other we will simply get temperature so what I have done here is I have broken I have broken this temp temperature t1 into root t1 and another root t1 so now we have two root t1 and t2 in the denominator and one root t1 would be cancelled out with the present with the root t1 which is present in the numerator so would we would be left only with the one root t1 in the denominator so I hope it is clear that how we have obtained the relation for the mass flow rate of the air and uh, I know the calculations are a bit complex but once you will practice it uh, it will be quite uh, you will come to know that these calculations are quite easy and uh, they are not very much difficult there are only one two things which needs to uh, which needs to be understand here one is that one is the factor that we are taking this p2 upon p1 to the power 1 upon gamma inside the square root when it is going inside the square root the power will not remain 1 upon gamma it will become 2 upon gamma because it is going inside the square root and the, uh, when it will be multiplied with the 
terms which is present inside the uh, inside the brackets one will give you the exact same thing however when on the other side the bases are same so the powers would be added uh, which means that 2 upon gamma and gamma minus 1 upon gamma would be added to each other and as a result as a result you will get gamma plus 1 upon gamma as a power ok uh, so now as I mentioned earlier that we will determine the two relations one which is for the mass flow rate of the air and other one which is which will be for the mass flow rate of the fuel so now we are going uh, but before we go to the calculation of mass flow rate of air uh, here we have some constant like CPR they we have and gamma CPR and gamma we have some constants here and when we replace the values of these constants we will get this relation and this whole factor is being instead of writing this complete factor over and over again it is simply represented as phi ok another thing which needs to be understand here is this is the relation for the mass flow rate of air and it is an ideal equation but actually there will be a lesser mass of a air which would be going inside the venturi inside the venturi section of the carburetor and in order to incorporate such effects we would multiply this term with the coefficient of discharge of the venturi coefficient and dis coefficient of discharge for the venturi which is cda discharge coefficient and a basically a in the suffix basically represents air so cda and 0 0.1562 they are all similarly the area as well area for one carburetor will remain constant we converted this into the proportionality and we simply came to know that mass flow rate is directly proportional to the atmospheric pressure and it is inversely proportional to the it is inversely proportional to the atmospheric square root of the atmospheric temperature and directly proportional to this factor which is which we represented simply as a phi So now uh, we have we have determined the relation we have determined the relation for the actual mass flow rate of the air now we we require another relation which is for the mass flow rate of the fuel since fuel is an incompressible liquid we can simply apply the Bernoulli equation on the fuel and for the fuel the state 1 and 2 I am using uh, this color for the fuel this is state 1 for the fuel inside the float chamber this is state 1 while the state 2 will remain same for fuel because it is going inside the venturi throat so state 2 will be same but the state 1 will not be at the entry where the air is present but it will be inside the float chamber and inside the float chamber there will be some pressure which would be exerting on the fuel but there will be the velocity of the fuel at the inside the float chamber will be 0 so c1 will be 0 there will be some pressure p1 and in the venturi throat there will be some pressure and also there will be some velocity as well and there is elevation difference which I mentioned in the beginning of this derivation there will be the elevation difference which we are simply representing as z because we have considered the datum at this point so there is no z1 because z1 is existing at this datum point 
this section is however a little above the datum so there will be a difference at state 2 but state 1 is existing at the datum so z1 will be 0 and z2 will simply be written as z so applying the Bernoulli equation since the velocity inside the float chamber is of the fuel is 0 inside the float chamber is 0 there is no kinetic energy we are writing it as 0 and there and the datum is also at uh, z1 so there will be no elevation of the fuel level inside the float chamber however there will be some pressure present now we will simply send this uh, p2 upon rho f on the left side where it will simply subtract with it and we will get p1 minus p2 upon rho f then this gz would be sent on the left side for the subtraction and the 2 which is present inside the which is present in the denominator would then go to multiply with this whole factor then we will take the square root to obtain the relation for the speed of the fuel okay so now we have obtained the relation for the speed of the fuel now again the area of the uh, fuel metering orifice is basically a design factor we do not require uh, to determine any relation for that ha and similarly the density of the fuel this density of the fuel is also since we the fuel is incompressible fluid so there will be no change in the density as well density of the fuel as well so it is also a constant so there is no need to determine the relation for that as well we only require we were only required to determine the relation for speed of the fuel which we have already determined it then we simply replace it and rearranging it to form this relation of mass flow rate of fuel which is area of fuel area of fuel metering orifice multiply by square root 2 times the density of fuel p1 minus p2 minus gz rho f since since this is the relation for the mass flow rate of fuel for ideal mass flow rate of fuel and in order to obtain the actual mass flow rate of fuel we will simply multiply it with the coefficient of discharge of the fuel now in order to determine the relation for the air fuel mixture air fuel ratio we will simply divide we will simply determine the ratio between the mass flow rate actual mass flow rate of air to the actual mass flow rate of fuel when we replace them we will get the relation for the actual mass flow rate of fuel so this was the derivation this was the relation which uh, we were required which we were asked to uh, obtain and uh, it's a bit complicated relation and required the number of formulations as well if I simply explain you the pattern which we have to follow is uh, first of all we would obtain 
relation for mass flow of air then for mass flow of fuel then we will determine the air fuel relation for the air fuel ratio but in order to determine the mass flow rate of fuel you were required to calculate C2 and rho 2 as well this is not pressure this is I am talking about the density at state 2 similarly for the mass flow rate of fuel you were only required to determine the C2 which is speed at state 2 we do not require the density 2 of the fuel because fuels are incompressible and their density will remain same so this was the flow for the first derivation when we are considering air as an incompressible uh, when we are considering air as a compressible fluid okay the, uh, because the density is changing so it will be a compressible fluid so now when we now we come towards the simplest uh, derivation which is for the which is for the relation of the air fuel ratio when we are neglecting the compressibility effects of the air or you can simply say when we are considering air as an incompressible fluid and since we are considering as a air as an incompressible fluid we will simply apply the Bernoulli equation and we will get this relation and we will rearrange it rearrange it to obtain the relation for C2 which is this and when we and since uh, now we have obtained the relation for C2 and now uh, since we need to determine the mass flow rate of air we will simply put C2 in this relation and you will note that the density here density of the air will remain same so the relation which we did for op to obtain the uh, relation so the calculation which we did to obtain the relation for that rho 2 we do not require to do those calculations here now we, uh, we put the value formula of C2 which we obtained earlier and when we rearrange this we will get this relation you will see for the actual mass flow rate we have also multiplied it with the coefficient of discharge of the air as well this is the formulation this is the relation which we have obtained for the for the actual mass flow rate of air when we have considered air as an incompressible fluid now we are again required to do the calculation for the fuel for the mass flow rate of the fuel which we have done in the previous derivation so I am not going to repeat that part again but when you are asked in exam you you will have to do that means you can you in in the exams you can be asked to drive the relation for the air fuel ratio for uh, when air is considered as an compressible fluid so you will have to do the first derivation in which you have to calculate these sections all of these things but when we are talking about but when we are talking about the second derivation you are required to do all these things mean you would be 
mass uh, you will calculate you will drive the relation for mass flow of air for the mass flow of fuel as well and then you will do the air you will do the calculations for the air fuel ratio but the difference will be in order to obtain in order to obtain the mass flow rate you will only require to calculate c2 because there there are no changes in the density and the calculation for the c2 would be very much easy as well because because in the first part in the first derivation air was considered as a compressible fluid you cannot apply the bernoulli equation on the compressible fluids and in the second derivation air is an incompressible fluid you can apply the bernoulli equation in on the you can apply the bernoulli equation on the incompressible fluid so in the second derivation we have simply determined the uh, mass uh, mass flow rate of air we have simply determined the c2 by using bernoulli equation but in the first derivation we determined the speed at section 2 c2 by using energy balance equation so you have to keep this in the mind that a, when air is considered as a compressible fluid you will do energy balance you will use energy balance equation when air is considered as a incompressible fluid you will use bernoulli equation so other things uh, and the part for this part will remain same for the both derivations then you will simply divide these relations to obtain the ratio for air fuel ratio so this is this is the relation for air fuel ratio and when we are considering that uh, there is no elevation effect or let's say this venturi this uh, fuel metering orifice which is which was z meters above this datum point let's say if i draw the datum point this is your datum point and this one here is the level this is the level of the uh, fuel metering orifice or the pipe which is from which the fuel is flowing into the venturi throat when they are at same level so z would be zero z would be zero when they are when this section is here on this blue line as well on the datum as well so for such cases for such cases z would be equal to 0 uh, another thing which um, you need to know here is the fuel metering the level of the fuel metering or if the output the outlet of the fuel metering orifice is either at either at some elevation which is in this which is shown in this drawing some elevation which uh, which i said z elevation or at the same level of the float chamber it will never be means this section this section this nozzle will never be below means it will be not be like this here if it is below the float chamber level there will be some dripping effects means pressure is exerting on this section so there will always be some fuel which is going outside this fuel metering orifice so this fuel metering orifice is either on the same level but usually it is always some some uh, small distance some centimeters some millimeters above the level of the fuel inside the float chamber so uh, you have to keep this in your mind as well so, uh, so now we will just conclude this uh, conclude the derivation when the z is 0 we will simply this factor will become 0 and 
then p1 minus p2 and p1 minus p2 in the denominator would cancel out with each other and we will simply be remain with rho 1 upon rho f inside the square root so this will be the relation for the air fuel ratio when for the com for the incompressible fluids when the air is considered as incompressible fluids and not only when the air is considered as incompressible fluid but also the fuel metering orifice is at the same level as the fuel inside the float chamber as well this is relation for the air fuel ratio when air is considered as incompressible fluid incompressible fluid only and this is the relation when air is not on where air is also where air is considered as incompressible fluid and not only that but also the f level of the fuel metering orifice is same as the fuel inside the float chamber or you can simply say when there is no z or z is equals to 0 so this is all from my side uh, for regarding the derivation they, the, they were two derivations uh, and you can in the exams you can be asked with the one of them or maybe with both of them so uh, they are not very difficult you only require to do a practice uh, if you do if you solve this derivation one time uh, you will you will uh, say that this derivation is uh, very easy to understand and very easy to solve in the next class we will do some uh, numericals regarding the topics of regarding the topic of uh, carburetor so uh, in case if you have any query regarding the previous regarding the previous three lecture of the carburetor and this lecture of the carburetor this this derivation as well you can always contact me you can always ask me uh, see you in the next video and we will solve some numericals uh, then we will conclude this topic of the carburetor okay Allah Hafiz